In her new memoir, The Great Peace, Mina reveals the intensely personal stories of her struggles for the very first time from surviving repeated sexual abuse from the age of 12 to overcoming drug addiction and experiencing a cycle of what she refers to as toxic relationships. Mina joins us now from her home in Los Angeles. Thank you so much for joining us. You, you know, the bravery of this memoir, I cannot praise you enough for it because I, I don't know if I could ever lay my life to bear in the way that you have. So let me just start, though, with, Mina, this part of the journey that you reveal regarding being the victim of assault and deciding to share that. Take me to where you are in your life, where you're starting to write it out, and you want to reveal that. Oh, wow. Um, well, I guess that moment really looked like uh, me sitting in my office facing this bin of my life that had sort of traveled around with me from storage unit to storage unit. And I had my diary in there. And I also had a red school binder full of about 60 loose leaf pages that I typed up. Oh, well, there it is. There's mm. my, the great piece. Um, so I made that, uh, in the late nineties and, um, I entitled it the great piece. Um, I believe it was a form of expression, you know, for me and mm. trying to heal then. And so, so many years later, when I found that binder, I initially wanted to just publish that yeah. and, um, maybe sort of still hide behind it in a sense. And, and then, uh, through sharing that binder with a friend and I shared some of the stories, um, behind it, you know, mm -hmm. some of these poems that I had dedicated to particular people, they really encouraged me to tell my yeah. whole story and to share it as a memoir. Um, and so I, sat with that for a little bit and, um, I guess I felt ready, you know, yeah. it was, it was sort of a, a different way of writing a book. I never thought that I would write one. And it really was more about just finally expressing myself. Mm. I kind of referred to it as like my ode to the universe or, you know, a way that I wanted to begin the next chapter of my life. Yeah. Um, well, you so know, yeah, they say so to I get kind to of the... just, I think I was inspired by others yeah. pushing me to share my whole story. I was right. inspired by the Me Too movement. And I think it was also just a mix of feeling that I was tired of suffering in silence mm. and, you know, uh, pretending like none of that had happened for me. Yeah. You mentioned particular people and the Me Too movement. When I was reading about what happened to you at such a young age, I have to be transparent. I thought, wait a minute, she was the victim of child abuse and one of her biggest movies was with Kevin Spacey, someone accused of, of um, awful things that he denies. But nevertheless, you wrote in the book about an uncomfortable encounter with Kevin Spacey. You said you were preparing to film an intimate scene and between setups, Kevin took me into a small room with a bed and we laid next to each other, me facing toward him while he held me lightly. Um, you go on to say, I was so used to being open and eager for affection that it felt good just to be touched. Um, take me to that moment. I mean, do you believe that, did you process that as inappropriate behavior? What do you process that as, what happened there? No, I, I appreciate you um, adding the additional quote there and, and um, you know, sharing... Uh, how what I was trying to point out was that it was in retrospect shocking to me that that was such a comfortable scenario for me. Um, you know, this book was never about a blame game or pointing fingers and even towards my family. And it was really me just trying to express my point of view along the way. And I shared that moment on American Beauty because it really was just that. And it was really me, um, you know, like my personal life 
on camera. Mm. I had been, I had been so used to that, um, scenario, you know, that dynamic of an older man. Um, I had been so used to that. I talk about a moment coming out to Los Angeles and being at the Oakwood and, you know, it was always somebody who was like nine or 10 years older than me. And I always end up in that kind of situation. And so what do you mean by that kind of situation? What I was, what I was fascinated by with American beauty was that it was, it was okay with me. Mm. When you say that kind of situation, are you referring to mm-hmm. this this environment where you are this young person, young woman, seemingly unprotected with people who, in some cases, take advantage of this vulnerability? I mean, you're a kid, you're a 13-year-old model, and I've talked to other child stars, and, and the difference is, a lot of the times, an adult in the room, a parent willing to protect you but it sounds like largely you were figuring this life out on your own. Yeah, I mean, with Kevin by then, I was of age. I was 18. But when you talk about those moments that I did experience as well as a younger girl at 13, um, I think that was really the point that I was trying to make, is that by the time that I experienced that moment with Kevin, that wasn't something that I questioned. It was um, understood. You know, it was some somebody wanted something from me or maybe needed something from me in an emotional sense. I didn't know. I still don't know because I haven't really asked that question or gotten the answer. What I was trying to point out is how we as women can end up in situations like that. And it's not black and white. You know, it. it to me, it was fascinating that I had become so conditioned to feeling comfortable in a situation like that, mm. um, where an older man technically wanted to lay down next to me. Wow. And I gave of myself. First of all, I'm struck by two things right now. The picture of you in the film, you know, we're talking about how much pain at that time you were experiencing, but you see this beautiful image of this award-winning film. I'm also struck by your necklace that says hope. You've balanced this pain with a lot of hope in your life, which is remarkable. And I've been thinking about, you know, this whole review of Britney Spears. And around that time of your um, ascent to fame was around the time that she was becoming very famous and how young women were treated at that time. I don't know if you've seen the Britney uh, documentary, but I'm sure you've heard about it. What in reflection do you feel about, particularly in the late 90s and the 2000s with young women like yourself, um, becoming very famous, but also clearly exploited in many ways? Oh, yeah. I mean, um, I shared some of that uh, in the book on, you know, when I shaved my head and I came back to for a project, I came back to the States and, uh, that was around the time that Brittany had also gone through that experience. And, um, it was, it was sort of just deemed that we'd lost our minds, you know, in some way. Um, I mean, I, I think that, um, you know, that that's something that I've been trying to you know, point out and talk about and hopefully that we we can change. I mean, I, I think it was nothing but um, stressors in, in, in the wrong direction. Mm. I sort of felt that, especially after American, I worked on American Pie and American Beauty back to back and then they came out back to back. And I did feel at that moment a lot of pressure to take on a particular role or take on you know, particular job. And I turned things down because, uh, of the way that they felt to me, they did feel, um, exploitative. Uh, and, and I, I felt that that sort of my own experience pushed me into a different light for others. Mm -hmm. I became, uh, more character, more independent. It was, um, it, it, it just yeah. felt like something that, that couldn't be honored. It couldn't wow. be celebrated. I wanted to do work that felt um, deeper yeah. and more, um, 
you know, challenging, uh, where I could discover myself through it. I didn't want to just wear a bikini. And so it felt a little punishing at the Hmm. time. Um, I think we've made some progress, but it, it did, you know, that was the focus, but that was something that I try to point out what I was so used to at 12 years old, being told that I looked 18. It was all about just the image. Right. And Mina, you found great peace in motherhood last April, welcoming your baby boy, Christopher Alexander. Thank you. Oh my gosh, what what has motherhood brought to your life? What has it changed? Well, listen, I don't have enough time for that because I can imagine it's about 5,000 things. <laughs> yeah. But what is the thing that's front of mind when someone says motherhood has changed you? Oh, I mean, honestly, I just feel so lucky. I I found out I was pregnant when I finished writing this book. Oh. And it's just the most magical thing ever. It I am just so honored. I'm so honored and so grateful. And I try every day to continue learning and to be present and to just change whatever I can to make his life mm. as great as it can be. I think it's interesting timing that you finish the book and then this it, literal next chapter opens in your life. No, I mean, I, I even meeting my husband, my husband's last name is Hope. I, I, there's a lot of that that I try to share that um, I, I, I think it's, you know, I try to touch on that because it's a testament to how I live my life. You know, I, I really believe in that. And, and so I just try to live in the gratitude every day because yeah. he really is the greatest gift.